Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about missing Barbara Louise Cotton. I'm going to start out by doing a blanket statement saying everything contained within is allegedly things that happened. A lot of this may be hearsay. I am not positive about its accuracy, so we'll, we'll just put a blanket statement over it and say it, it is all allegedly. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons database, over 600,000 people go missing every year, and about 4,400 unidentified bodies are recovered every year. About 1,000 of them remain John or Jane Doe cases after a year passes. The four states with the most missing persons at this time is California, Florida, Texas, and Arizona, including murder victims and those who died via natural causes or otherwise. There are about 40,000 remains yet unidentified in the United States at this time. One of those people who went missing is Barbara Louise Cotton, who has been missing since April 11, 1981 at the age of 15 years old. She is described as a white female with brown hair, hazel brown eyes, a curvature of her spine which may cause a slight limp when she walks. Her left ear is a little lower than her right. She had pierced ears a mole on the upper right of her chest and one on the right side of her neck. She was a smoker. She was born November 16, 1965 in Tioga, Tioga, Williams County, North Dakota. She was only five foot two and weighed about a hundred pounds. She was wearing jeans, a blouse, and slip-on loafer shoes. She is described as having excellent teeth. She was the daughter of John and Louise Cotton. She was one of nine children. She had left her belongings, including her clothes, her cigarettes, any cash, her last paycheck, and she had money in a personal savings account that she had left behind as well. Most say that Barbara is last seen leaving cakes and cones in Williston, North Dakota on April 11, 1981, although there is speculation that she may have gone to a party that evening. Barbara would possibly have passed through Recreation Park and then continued along 5th Street West on her way home after leaving cakes and cones. Stacy DeMar Werder who was a dishwasher at Cakes and Cones, saw her walk from the Plainsman building to Recreation Park, where she had five blocks left to her home. I have heard it stated that her path home that night may have led her on Main Street up 5th Street and 6th Avenue West, although looking at the map, if she had cut through Recreational Park, it, it seems she was going on a different route. She was never heard from again. Her body or remains have never been recovered at this time, to our knowledge. Stacy DeMar Werder is someone which one or more persons have referred to as her boyfriend, while others close to her do not believe that he was. The next day, Cotton's sister Kathy and brother Kent went looking for her and asking people who lived in the neighborhood in the area she may have walked if they had heard or seen anything. No one had. There are a few suspects, including Stacy Werder, her older brother Frank, a man who left Williston three weeks later, and possibly others. She was described by a close friend as a very beautiful, sweet girl, shy to those she didn't know, but fun and full of laughter with those that she did. Authorities now believe that she may have been abducted. One suspect in the case is Frank Delapina, 
who had been in Williston at the time that Barb went missing. Long, not long after she had gone missing, two young girls were murdered, and their bodies were found at a rest stop on Interstate 80, east of Rawlings, Wyoming, on May 8, 1981. They were Renee Davidson, age 9, and Penny Swanson, age 12. Here is a picture of Renee Rachel Dav Davidson, born February 26, 1972, in Rollins, Wyoming, and died May 7, 1981, at the age of 9. The man accused of strangling them or suffocating, because early on it said suffocating and now it says strangling, was Frank Delapina, age 29, and he hanged himself in his jail cell in Hugo, Colorado on May 22, 1981. Rollins authorities closed their investigation into the murder of the young girls shortly after they found him hanging in his cell. About a month after Barb's disappearance, Frank Delapino was in Riverton, Wyoming, when he approached a 21-year-old woman in a grocery store offering to give her a puppy for free. He invited her to come home to his van, which was pulling a camper. He then tried to convince her to come into the camper to look for the puppy with him. When she declined, he attempted to lure her into his van. She tried to leave, and he parked behind her, blocking her in. She finally agreed to let him follow her home, and then ditched him along the drive. She then reported him to the police and picked him out of a lineup. He was arrested, accused of murdering the two young girls, and then he was found hanging in his jail cell. Case closed. Barb's older brother, Frank, is also described by his sister on a podcast by James Walner as what I can only describe as a sexual predator. She states that she had filed charges against him and dropped them for touching his 13 or 14 year old niece, her daughter. She makes other accusations against him as well. I would like to mention that he has never been accused of murder anywhere else that I can locate. The one who has been referred to as a possible boyfriend, Stacy Werder, also has accusations from a sibling on a podcast by James Walner as being a sexual predator. And if the accusations are true, which I will leave such judgments to others, then he would in fact be a very dangerous sexual predator indeed. He hung himself in jail as well at the young age of 21 in Malta, Phillips County, Montana. He apologizes on the phone to his sister before hanging himself, possibly for trying to molest the other sister and for setting their house on fire. What happened to Barbara Cotton? Well, no one knows. It could have been one of those people or someone else, as she has never been found. Perhaps. There was someone creepy who was hanging out in or near Recreation Park around that time. Did you ever witness anyone in that area acting out of sorts that seemed creepy or dangerous? Have you ever seen Barbara Cotton? Do you, did you ever meet Frank Cotton, Stacy Werder, Frank Delapino, or anyone else in or near that area that you think may have done something? Have you ever witnessed anything like this or had someone try to lure you into their vehicle? Those with information are urged to call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678 or the Williston Police Department Missing Persons Unit at 701-577-1212. To get a lot more information on the case, visit the Coda Spotlight podcast by James Wellner. He has over 15 podcasts on the subject listed under A Better Search for Barbara. 
There is currently a movement called Fine Barb Cotton, a webpage called FindBarbCotton.com. They have a billboard near Walmart in Williston, North Dakota that they raise funds for and links for other pages that they have on other platforms. They have merch for funding and proceeds go to the billboard and trying to get information. You can donate $100 and get a mention for your business on Dakota Spotlight. You can email findbarbcotton at gmail.com for more information. Here is a page with the information on Barbara Louise Cotton. Here are photos of Stacy Werder and Barb Cotton. This is Stacy DeMar Werder, born October 5, 1959, in California, who died July 16, 1981, age 21, in Montana. Here is a newspaper clipping that stated that Authorities on Tuesday identified the California man who hanged himself in his jail cell last week as Stacy DeMar Werder, 21, of Montague. Werder was arrested in Malta Theater by city police July 15th on a charge of disorderly conduct and was held in Phillips County Jail on a $100 bail. I'm going to end this by doing a blanket statement again saying, Everything contained within is allegedly things that happened. A lot of this may be hearsay. I'm not positive about its accuracy and therefore just doing a blanket statement over it and saying it is all allegedly. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. Bye-bye.